All right. For some reason, we got disconnected, so we are back, and we will make sure that we post both parts. Um, so we were back. We were talking to um, Cedric about the importance of branding, and we were starting to talk about where we can find your work so people can start to look at your work um, on the internet and also on Facebook. So what are your, where can we find your work? So um, my website is www.303creatives.com. Than s.com. Um, a lot of my early work is on there. I haven't really updated my website, but a lot of my current work will be on Facebook. If you look up 303 Creatives on Facebook, um, you should be able to find it. Here's my business card right here. So if you see that eagle with the crown and the 303, you'll know that that is me. Um, again, I offer logos, branding, business cards, flyers, t-shirt designs, um, basically everything to kind of get you going on your way. Um, you can also look at my work on Instagram uh, at 303creatives with an S underscore. Um, that's where you'll find me on Instagram. Uh, so those are my social media connects. Um, and that's where you can see my work. Okay. Um, show us, you said you have a couple of samples with you, so can let's share some of those samples and tell us what either inspired them, what do you like the best about them, or why did you choose these samples to show us? Okay, so um, I just picked a few things, um, nothing too crazy. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Lisa's business card for um, her women's group, Women Reaching Higher. Um, so. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a questionnaire that I give to all my clients, um, especially when they're looking to get a logo done. Um, I want their ideas to be present. So a lot of times I ask them if they have an idea already, give me uh, everything you got, you know, any pictures that, that inspire you. Um, any, if you have drawings already, if you have a previous logo and it needs to be updated. Um, so, you know, that way it, it's not just me providing you with the logo. It's something that we've created together. You know, and that's the biggest part about it is that we're making this together. It's not just something that I'm doing for you. So we'll start with uh, Lisa's card. Okay, hold on. I gotta figure out how this camera thing works. Okay, so this is Lisa's card. Um, so. A big part about it, and I know it's kind of hard to see, guys, but I mean, you'll see it on my website as well. Um, uh, her big thing was using the colors uh, purple and gold. Now, um, again, a lot of people have um, a preference on color, um, but in the graphic world, especially for us graphic artists, and a lot of my fellow graphic artists can relate to this, Certain colors have certain meanings and feelings. Purple is a royal color. So, you know, for this group of women, powerful women, queens, mind you. Um, so purple definitely needed to be tied in. You know, her logo actually has a crown on it as well. So it's stressing the importance of our queens working together. So that's where the purple is coming into play. Um, so definitely tie the purple and gold into the card itself. Um, a lot of the fonts that I use for the logo, make sure to tie that into the card as well, because you, what you don't want is a logo that's out there, and then all your graphic work looks way different than what your logo is. So then people are going to see it, and they're not going to tie the two together. So the a big part, a big part of this here, and, and it's, I'm not saying that, you have to use just one designer um, to get your work done, okay? But it's important that everybody on your team is sharing the same vision. So, you know, in, in this particular case, I did her flyer, her t-shirt design, her logo, and her business card, and it's important for all that stuff to match um, because then people that might see the flyer but don't see the t-shirt and the business card know that they go hand in hand. So it's the same thing, whatever, because a lot of times there'll be logos out there that look real similar and people are like, oh, I don't know if that is this person or it's not. So um, with hers, back of her card, <laughs> God, this camera. 
says, don't be ashamed of your story. It will inspire others. Now, that's a deep, deep quote that she had um, that also inspired her business. And so it was important to put this on the card. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If you're at a coffee shop and there's a bunch of business cards on the counter, all right, and you walk by and you see this and you read that, that might move you in some kind of way where you felt like you really just needed to grab that. You might have been in a bad mood and that might pick you up. That's the entire point of doing this card this way. And, and we both work together on making this possible. Now, if you really look deep, you can see a bunch of hands holding each other. That's a bunch of women's hands holding each other. So it's to show, you know, to show the importance of the group of building each other up, okay? Women reaching higher. Now, on the front, obviously it has her name, but she does her email, her phone number, her social media contacts. And at the bottom it says, strong women lift each other up, okay? Now, I can't speak for women, but you know, as somebody that would pick this card up, um, that's pretty deep. So. It's, it's a lot to, it's not just, oh, I'm just designing you a business card. I want to, I want to push that to you guys, the type of designer that I am. We're not just doing any old regular business card, whatever. It's, it's got to have more meaning to it. When I'm trying to support you and what you're doing, I want you to dig deeper than your regular whatever you're doing. This is why I say you have your box. All this stuff that you do inside the box, I want you to come outside of this box, okay? I mean, what else can we do? You know, if you ask Lisa or whatever, she's still on her doing her homework right now. I asked her um, what else can she put the logo on to give to people that if she had a table. Um, so a big part here. And, and like I said, it, it's, it's, it's different for individuals. It's different for different clients. But in her case, um, I felt like this was important. I actually also pushed this to Tiffany for her business as well. Lisa had a table um, at an event, and I told her that, you know, obviously you want to have your business cards and your flyers on the table or whatever. If you got shirts, that's cool. But you have to think the table is, what, you know, four foot by, I don't know, eight foot or whatever. You might have a long table. What else can you do on this table to represent your company, to have people? all in the building come to your table so you put the logo on the tablecloth you want the tablecloth to be a color that brings people to you okay then you want to think about what else can you have on your table when somebody comes to your table they'll see your business card your flyer they'll read the information now especially when it comes to uh, business cards and flyers and um and i'll show you a flyer in a minute you don't want to have too much information on there i guarantee you that a lot of people do not want to read a lot of information. Okay, get to the point. Who, what, where, why, you know, all the big points, whatever, because people don't really want to read that much. So I push those points, and then I try to make what the design look as attractive as possible. Okay, so on that table, it's like, what else can you have? You know, when that person leaves your table, they're going to take your business card. What else can they take with them? To have them thinking about you and your business and your product and your service and what you offer, you know, and so that's her homework. That's the homework I gave her. So I told her about making a, a box. OK, and this is for the women reaching higher. And I said, you want to take some interesting, deep quotes. OK, some inspiring quotes, you know, to, to, to just really build up women. Put them all in the box. And that's your inspiration box. And when these women, or it could be men, anybody in general, you know what I'm saying? When they come to the table, you're going to tell them about your business. You're going to give them your information. They may be interested. They may not be. Before they leave that table, have them pull one of those pieces of paper out of that box. It has a quote on it. That might be the one thing that makes their day. That might be the one thing that's like, hey, that was so deep and inspiring. I want to do business with her. I want to come back. I want to see what they're doing. Okay. That could work for a lot of other different companies and businesses as well, or whatever, but that's my job to, to determine that and to help you figure that out as the designer that's working on your product 
So, you know, it's working together. So um, that's that one. Um, this one I want to share with you guys. <laughs> okay. All right. This is DJ Sean Nice. Now, if you are from Baltimore or you live here in Charlotte, um, Sean Nice is one of the best DJs I've ever seen or heard. He did my wedding. I've been to a bunch of his events. He definitely knows how to rock the crowd. So it's not just about the music and they call him the blend king. And I mean, it's, it, he definitely does that. He can put two songs together that you would never think would go together. And it's like having a brand new song out. I mean, amazing. This guy is super talented. Anyways, he came to me and um, he, he just said, you know, said I need a logo. Um, and I told him, you know what? I got you. Don't even worry about it. You know, so if you look here. All right, so that's his logo there, um, and his logo is basically in purple and white, you know, to represent uh, the Baltimore uh, colors, which is that's where he's from. Um, and so the whole background is there's people partying, there's the DJ booth in there, and it has all of his contact information. Does he have a? What is his Facebook page so that I can? Um, I believe his Facebook page is the Blend King or at the Blend King One, uh, but you can just pull up oh, it's Sean Nice. Yeah, that's it. Okay. King one. So I'm tagging him now. Since you called him out as being the best DJ, we need to make sure that people know how to reach the best DJ. Yes. Yeah, so um, this, uh, um, he had a business card, and this is the upgrade of his business card. Now, if you look at this, this is not your regular business card size. And your business card size is usually standard two by three and a half. It could be front and back. It could be one-sided. Now, this is one-sided. It's straight to the point. DJ Sean Nice, how you can reach him, boom, that's it. You know, and, and that, that's really straight to the point because as he provides a service, what he does is going to get you. So if you're at one of his parties and he's doing his mix, um, then you already know what you're dealing with, whatever. So then this is basically a straight to the point contact. Thing. So um, that's that. Um, and, and I try to do my research when it comes to these design products. So sometimes, you know, you just want something that's a little bit better than the competition. Okay, I have a question. How do you feel about putting your, your picture on card? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so people understand that, that every year, you know, like things change. You know, things progress, things get better. You know, technology, you name it, everything kind of grows. So there was a point in time where everybody was putting their picture on their business card. Um, and, and this and this might be just my opinion as, as a graphic designer, but I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that is a huge no. That's a, that's a big no for me. Okay, so if, if you want me to do your business card of fire, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. I'm just telling you that right now. So, um, and, and let me explain. Depending on the product that you're selling, depending on the service that you're providing, um, you don't want people to judge you based off of your appearance. Now, it depends. Now, you might be selling a product that is, you know, on you, you know what I mean, whereas it, it's about you. And that might make sense. And when in those situations, you know, I understand that part, you know what I'm saying? We can figure that one out. But you know, some some cases it just doesn't make sense. You know, if you are a realtor, I see a lot of the realtor cards that's got their picture on there. But is it that necessary to put your picture on there? Is that really gonna make or break you? Is that gonna pull that client in? Is that gonna sell you that house? You know, you really want to think about that because that could hurt you. You know, at the end of the day, there are people out there that do judge based off of appearance. So you might be, let's for example, a, a black woman. You put your picture on the card and your, uh, let's say, uh, your, your service is nails, okay? But there might be people out there that don't want their nails done by a black woman. And, I, and, and it's sad to say, but that is that, that point, whatever. So you really got to think about your target audience too. Major, major, major point here is who are you? Who are you dealing with? Who are you selling to? You know, if if you just want to stay within 
your community, that's great. Do that. You know, but you're putting yourself in a box and you won't go any further than that box. Promise you. You know, so if you want to reach other people, you know, like there's people that have businesses and they want to reach kids, they want to reach uh, other cultures. You have to really think about your brand and, and what you're putting out there and if that is going to reach these other cultures. So, um, you know, in certain situations, it's just not ideal. Um, even if, if you have a t-shirt company, okay, or, or if you have a clothing line, all right, now I know that this is a this is again one of those situations where it can go either way. You know, some people want to see the design on you. So that might make sense. Um, but everybody is not like that. So you really gotta think about everybody in this situation. You know, some people might have two different type of cards or whatever, you know what I'm saying, for that particular reason. But you gotta think about that, you know. So like if you are a woman and you're promoting a plus size uh apparel company okay um and in particular for that um a lot of the plus size women at least the ones that i know you know it's not just oh you show it to me online and i'm just supposed to be like yeah i'm gonna buy that i need to see how that's gonna fit you know what i'm saying that 3x whatever <laughs> might look good on becky over there or whatever but you know when i get that 3x it might not look good on me my roles might be this and that or whatever and i mean and that's just not for everybody but i'm just saying you know that's something that you have to think about as the the you know the person that's running this business you know you want to think about how you can reach your clients so um yeah for me that's that's a big no on putting the, your the picture on on your business card uh just saying, you know, but if you if you have a business like you're um, you're selling baked goods, I mean, it just makes more sense to put a picture of the baked goods on your car than a picture of yourself on the car because you're not really selling yourself. You're selling the, the, the product and uh, people going to want to buy the product. And I don't foresee somebody looking at the car like, ooh, she looks amazing or he looks so handsome. I'm definitely going to do business with him. And there's a good maybe 10, 15, 20% that might work like that, but you still got that all the rest of that percent that's not really rocking like that. So you really got to think about this. You got to do your research. Okay. My other question is when it comes to logos, because I hear you talking to people, um, a lot of people have um, an idea of what they want their logo to look like. But then there's people who have no clue what it is that they want for their logo. What do people need to consider when they're starting to brand their business and they're thinking of their logo? What are some key points that people need to be thinking about? Okay, so, um, you know, when it comes down to designing uh, a logo, you know, and some people say, oh, you know, I can do it myself, that's great. You know, if you can, do, definitely do it. If you can draw it up yourself, that's great too. Um, that definitely helps in the process. Uh, you really have to think about, again, bringing back up color. Um, you have to think about uh, fonts. Um, is it legible? You know, is the font too much? You know, does this font look too urban? You know, is this going to reach the audiences that I want it to reach? You also want to think about, and I've run across this a lot, depending on your business, your product, your service, does this icon this logo match number one and number two you don't want it to take away from what service or product you are providing like putting your face on a card when you're selling cakes or putting your face on the card and you're selling plus size clothing right or <laughs> like um i there's uh putting a crown when you're selling music or something like that well, so you want to make well, sure the that the crown and music might go in the end or whatever it, it really depends but yeah. um if the service is really what you're pushing the logo does not have to be super extravagant you know and uh, you know people like will say oh man i want this dragon holding the letters with fire coming out of the mouth and then i want an angel taking behind it and this <laughs> and that that now the things that you have to think about with the logo is, and and I, you know, this is uh, also a part of the questionnaire that I give out. How are you going to use this logo? Planned usage. What are you going to put it on? Are you putting it on letterheads, business cards, flyers? How big is it going to appear? 
if you have a logo that's got a fire breathing dragon on it and it's gonna appear this big on a business card flyer or shirt nine times out of ten you're not even gonna be able to see the dragon's face or the fire so that's something that you really have to think about so a lot of times when i push that to people a lot of times the ideas that they had might kind of go out the window and so I try my best to incorporate their idea as much as possible. But once they fill out that questionnaire and they fill out how they want it used, sometimes it just does not work. So, you know, don't be alarmed, you know what I mean? But you want to do what's going to work best for you, for your business visually. So, you know, like I said, some things, it's just, it's just not ideal. Like, if you know, especially for the, the ones that do um, food and uh baked goods, desserts, you name it. People are eating this product. They want to look at the product. They want to look at the cakes or pies or whatever it is that you're offering, the, the food, the, the, the crab legs, whatever. If it looks good, picture-wise, okay, yeah, they look good. I need to try them out. You get there, you eat it. It's delicious, okay? Yeah, so it's not about necessarily the logo at that point. The logo is just a piece to really bring them in. You know, there's going to be a certain percentage of people that look at that. And then there's going to be a certain, you know, percentage that is it's more about the product itself. Uh, you know, and as a designer, I pay attention to things. So I don't know if you guys have noticed over the last couple of years, Wendy's changed their logo, their signage. And you might not think that it made a big deal, but it made a big deal you know, to the people that work for Wendy's, that work for corporate, they understand that there's people that drive by and see that sign, and it's going to make a difference how many people are still coming there or not. Um, Old Charlie's is a big one. They changed their whole entire font over the last couple years. You know, so now the font is is a it's a it's a more friendly font, so to speak. Um, they still incorporate the uh, the green that they use. But I guarantee you, you know, you might not know, but their business increased when they changed over. Um, uh, go back to Walmart whenever they changed over. You know what I'm saying? Now it's, it's, it's a whole lot more to it. You don't just see the letters Walmart and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Walmart. Walmart used to be just the letters, used to be navy blue and red. Now they have the asterisk. You see the asterisk, you still know it's Walmart. So um, a, a lot of that, that plays, plays a big role. Okay, I see you have some more examples. Why did you pick the rest of them that you have? Okay, so, uh, all right, so is this center. Uh, this is Gettings Garden. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, so this is a, a strawberry farm. Now, they're seasonal, obviously, whatever for the strawberries, but I did their uh, logo and their postcard. So, this is not just a regular flyer or a business card, this is a postcard. Now, um, so you see it has a coupon on there. So that's something slightly different than the competition or everybody else is doing. So this is that part where you think outside the box. It has the times that they're open and closed. Um, it actually has a map on how to find them, has the logo on there, and they actually do their own mailing. So they stamp it, they put their mailers out there, and they send them out. So um, this, this took a lot of thought and process. You know, even down to picking the right fonts. You know, we wanted a nice, thick, bold font because, you know, their target audience is families, but it's also older people, younger people. So for the older people that have a hard time reading or whatever, the fonts are big, they're bold, so they can see it. Um, now, this here is actually a CD. Uh, so this is a uh, CD cover um, and case. Uh, so now I didn't design the actual uh, the packaging. I mean, I designed the label, and they and the client actually had it printed. So this is a um, quartet gospel group called Renewed of the Carolinas. Um, this is uh, one of their albums entitled Breakthrough. And so this is one of those clients that you know they didn't necessarily have an idea of what they wanted. They just wanted something to be really nice and creative and, and pleasing to the eye. So this is Renewed of the Carolinas. That, um, there's, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, uh, it's right touch promotion. Yeah. 
Uh, and so on the back, obviously, has all the track information, um, logos, uh, all the copyright information, and the CD. Did the CD label as well. Um, nothing fancy. But um, this is, again, you know, for Renewed of the Carolinas, I, and I did their logo as well. And this is when I ask you, what are you going to put the logo on? How are you going to use it? And what else can we do to put you a step further? So this was a nice touch, you know, doing this. Um, now, to bring Butterfly Visions Project. So, and this is a nonprofit business, means a lot to Miss Tiffany here. This is the back of the business card. Now, if you know what Butterfly Visions Project is, um, it is a nonprofit for um, to build awareness for domestic violence and sexual assault victims. And so if you really take a deep, deep look at the card, there's a woman uh, on the ground with her head down um, and the color purple uh, is ties closely in with domestic violence um, awareness and survivors. So, like I said, it's not just about just picking your favorite color or, ooh, this is going to look cute. You know, you want to think about what it actually means to the business, to the movement, to what it ties to. So, um, and this is a deep, deep, I mean, if you see this on the table and it just basically says, if you're a victim, we're here to help. Now, to a victim that's out there, there might be a lot of victims that are walking around you. And they don't want everybody to know that they're victim. They don't want everybody to know that they're not ready to speak out. But when they see this, they might grab it. And uh, I guarantee you, it's a lot different than if I just slam the logo right on there because people will see the logo. They might not know exactly what it is, but they're going to pick that up. On the back, real simple. has the logo. Uh, has uh, Ms. Tiffany's information, her contact information. Um, and so it's just straight to the point. So, you know, and when they get it, you know, they know how to reach her. And when they're comfortable and ready to speak up, they will reach her. Simple as that. Now, I'll show you guys my card. And um, I stay changing my card because as a graphic designer, of course, I want to stay relevant. And I just want to, you know, keep kind of going. Um, and I, I can actually go get my old card so you can see the progress. Um, so like I said, it's real simple. I'll let you know what I do. Um, and my slogan is let's create art. Simple as that. You know, so we're a team. When I'm working with you, we are a team. Has the website, has my logo on there, and on the back, all my contact information. Um, obviously, this has not been updated yet because it does not have my Instagram on there, but it has my email, my Facebook. Now, um, to go back to what Miss Tiffany was saying before. Now, I can slap my face on there and be like, hey, I'm Cedric Sanders and I do graphic design. Okay. And there's that good 10, 15% that I was telling you about that might be like, ooh, he's kind of handsome. I want to do work with him. <laughs> okay. But then there's other people that are going to be like, who's this black man on this thing or whatever? I'm good. I don't, I don't need that work. So it's, you don't know. So, and I'm and not going to lie, I had a card that had my picture on it. Okay, but like I said, you know, as time progresses, whatever you want to think about how you can reach the people that you want to reach the best. Because I don't want to single myself out. I don't want to box myself in. And and as a black man, I, I love my culture. I love my fellow black people. But you know, I want to do work for some other people too. Um, so it, it's just that's just me. You know, like I said, and if you're, you just want to deal with the culture, then great. You know what I mean? Then we can do that. We can put. Uh, Whatever information you want to put on there, you know, but it's it's you really have to do your research on what you're doing. Let me, let me get that. So while we're um, waiting for him to come back, if you have any questions pertaining to um, logos, to branding yourself, um, or you have a business, please tag your business now while you're watching, um, so that we can see what your businesses are. Let's check out your logos. Let's check out what you have going on on your um, business pages. Let's see how you're branding yourself. So right now, while we're, while we're waiting for him to um, show us an older version of his car to compare for us, um, tag your businesses so that we can see your businesses, we can see what you're doing. Or if you want to rebrand yourself um, or you have any questions, 
type your questions so that we can answer those while we have Cedric with us. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys. Again, I started doing freelance design in 2005. Now, I was still in school because I graduated in 2006. So as I was learning different design techniques, right, this is my very first card right out of school. Now, as you can see, my number has not changed. <laughs> so I had the same number for a really long time, uh, same email, um, but it's, you know, something real simple. It's got a different kind of design to it. Um, so, you know, it's not just about, oh, just slap this information on there, whatever. You want to really think about how you want it to look. And on the back, you know, at the time, like I said, this is my very first card. So, you know, I got my logo real big, you know, so people to know who I am. Right now, best to kind of put these side by side. Uh, well, I, I can't do this with the camera. Um, so now this card here, oh, this one. Okay, so this one is the progress from this one. Okay, all right. So as you can see, I kind of kept some of the same concepts. Um, but uh, people, please keep in mind that it's you know you can make text go up and down sideways left and right upside down you know and depending on who you're trying to reach it might make sense you know so uh for me as a graphic designer that makes sense i mean i can do that as a graphic designer but it doesn't work like that for everybody um so this is a family card that i designed um and it's just super simple family the logo Friends or the family you get to choose, contact information. Nothing on the back, straight to the point. You know, and sometimes that's all it takes. So it, it really just depends. Um, okay, so we're coming to the end of our podcast. So there's a couple of things I wanted to cover. One, um, shout out your some of your loyal customers. Who are some of your customers that keep coming back for you to keep branding them, keep doing stuff for them? Who are some of your loyal customers Ooh, that you that you've had? Well, of course you. <laughs> uh, I, I've done probably uh, four or five, maybe six of Tiffany's businesses or companies. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so definitely those. Um, uh, shout out to uh, Bobby Jean at um, Posh Beauty Bar. Um, I did her, uh, her early work, her logo, her t-shirts, her flyers. Uh, Shaw Nice, his logo, T-shirts, business cards, flyers. Um, now, when you see his logo, you see him on all the promotional club flyers and all the events that he does. Um, uh, so my mom for Right Touch Promotions and Make It Gospel. I do a lot of her gospel flyers, her cards. Um, Renewed of the Carolinas is the one, the, one of the gospel groups, the, the CD that I showed you. I did their logo, uh, promotional flyer, and CD cover. Um, Lisa, as we mentioned earlier, her logo, flyer, business card, t-shirts. Um, I work closely with Wide Press. Now, that's somebody that I want you guys to look up, Wide Press. Um, he does a lot of the printing, mostly the t-shirts. Um, I think he can print on pillowcases and, and hand towels and you name it. Um, but uh, when people, you know, come to me and they need a uh, design printed, uh, no. Um, when they need a design printed, um, I usually uh, refer him first. Uh, so, uh, shout out to Wide Press, and I think it's just if you look up Wide Press or Wide Press Printing on Facebook, you should be able to find him. Um, but his name is Brian Wideman. So, um, shout out to Brian. Uh, Goombe Charlotte, um, and it's has grown. It's more than just the kickball league now. Now they offer a uh, uh, numerous sports, um, but I created their initial logo and their logo for the different sports that they provide. So basketball, football, uh, tennis, uh, kickball being one of the main ones. Uh, shout out to Tanika Williams or Rogers now. Um, she just started her own um, league, sports, adult sports league uh, called Gap. Sports, G A A P Sports, um, and her husband Melvin. He started his uh, own um, it's a basketball 
uh, training. Um, so uh, I did his logo and initially we'll be working on his business cards and other things. Um, who else? Uh, shout out to uh, Keisha and Casey Steele, the, the Steele household. Um, I've actually done three of their logos. So they have uh, the diamond status traveling for um, uh, the traveling. Uh, Keisha Cakes um, for her doing her um, desserts, uh, pound cakes. Um, definitely have to look them up. Um, and Casey's Kitchen for uh, catering, all your catering needs. Um, so uh, definitely look them up as well. Um, who else? It's some, some recent work. Um, shout out to Benny Gray. Um, I've been doing a couple of his flyers here lately um, for different events that he hosts and promos for. Um, that's it. That's a good, well, that's that's a good lineup. Your, that's a good lineup, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have a lot of loyal customers, and I think mm -hmm. that was basically the point that I wanted to make is that um, you have a lot of um, loyal customers um, who have come back to you repeatedly. Um, so just very quickly to sum it up, why is it important to bring yourself? Um, okay. Again, <clears throat> you you want to get yourself out there as best as possible. You want to reach everybody that you can, definitely the target audience that you're trying to reach. So it's not just about what your product does and what service you provide. Um, you want to reach everybody. You want to present yourself as best as possible. Okay, sounds great. Lastly, the whole point of this month with the Speak Up and Inspire series is to um, talk to men who are doing good things in the community, doing great things in the community. So I wanted you to talk about Framley and what it is that, what does Framley mean to you? Um, we already know where it started in part one of our um, video tonight, or our interview tonight, but what does Framley mean to you personally and what is it that Framley does in the community? So, um, People that uh, that know me, you know, know that I have a big heart. Um, I'm very passionate about giving back to the community as much as I can, whenever I can. Um, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody has that that thing that that kind of pushed them to that. And um, you know, it's been a thing for me for a while. And then you know, I got to a point where I really kind of just wanted to give up on it and. Uh, a couple of years ago with my apartment fire and losing everything um, that just that kind of that was that turning point for me. Um, if you know me or you know of me, some of the things that I've done, especially with the family name, um, I've been for the last four years doing a family bingo night at a nursing home in Pineville, Pineville Rehab. Uh, so shout outs to Julie and all the staff at Pineville Rehab Center. Um, so at the nursing home, you know, get with all the residents there uh, and uh, we host a nice friendly game of bingo. It's usually at nighttime. It's usually on a Tuesday. Um, so we make sure to, to feed them, bring them some desserts, some tea. Uh, I try to bring as many volunteers as possible, kids, families, you name it. And, uh, and we just played a nice game of bingo. Now, it, anybody that knows about the bingo, is it's not what you just uh, originally thought it was the residents there they take bingo very seriously there's four corners diagonal backwards full coverage there's so many ways to play i learned that in doing this over the last four years but i also get um everybody to um to donate and and we make gift bags whatever so that when they win they really felt like they won and so this is something that i've been doing through the family name for the last four <laughs> years and um you know, at first it was just, you know, we'll do a couple of them and it was going to be good. But we saw how it affected them, how it influenced them, how, how much it meant to them for us to be there, just to talk to them. A lot of them get dropped off and, and their family don't come back to visit. You know, some of them, you know, this is their last moments in life. So um, it just means a lot to them for us to be there. So, you know, continue doing it. You know what I'm saying? So I try to do it every couple months. And then after my apartment fire, I really just didn't have it to do it. But the thing that really moved me, the staff and the residents pulled 
funds together. They got me a gift card for a hundred dollars and they gave it to me to get some new clothes because I really, like I said, I lost everything. And the fact that they did that and like these residents, they, the residents don't have that much, you know, and, and the staff, I mean, I, you know, they don't know me like that, whatever, to do something like that. So for them to all pull together and do that, that meant the world to me. And so that was a sign for me to keep pushing, keep going, no matter what, I have to keep doing this. So, um, yeah, so that's that's what we're doing with that. I, I continue to do that. Um, I definitely want to um, to do more with uh, the homeless um, here. I think that's a big issue, whatever. And, and there's definitely so much that we can do with that. Um, I have been talking and working uh, closely with uh, Sanja uh, from Gracious Hands, and she does a lot with the homeless here as well. Whatever. So definitely trying to partner with her um, and do some stuff. And um, I also talked to my barber, Fly Ty, and he does a lot with homeless too. So definitely want to reach into that. You know, I definitely don't want to do too much because this is just something that I do off, off from my heart, honestly. So, you know, it's, if I got it, I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that is... Um, Mr. Cedric Sanders, again, the owner of 303 Creatives, <clears throat> also the founder of Framley, where friends are family. Um, he's the creative director for Butterfly Visions Project and also for Vibes Over Everything. Um, talking tonight about the importance of branding. If you haven't heard anything else tonight, Hopefully you understand that the importance of branding is very important for getting your brand out there, promoting your, your products, your services, whatever it is that you're representing, um, and just making sure that your designs are thoughtful in line with what it is that you want to put out in the universe um, as your brand, um, and to also uh, make sure that your branding is consistent when it comes to your logo, your shirt designs, your flyers, your website, that your branding is consistent. And that doesn't mean that you have to keep the same logo for 10 years. You can change it as needed. You can upgrade it as needed. But the importance of branding is to make sure that your products and services, that when people see your logo or they see your brand or they hear of your brand, they know that it's coming back to you. So, Cedric, did you want to go ahead and close it out? Yes, um, I wanted to, to make note of a, a very important uh, fact when it comes to logos. And I need everybody to kind of keep this in mind when it comes to their logo, if they currently have one, or if they're in talks of trying to get one created. Um, a lot of people don't get 100% uh, educated on um, how a logo works. Some people don't know, you know, some people do know. And so it's important that you understand that there's different file types. And I, I'll make sure to explain this to everybody that I get in contact with. There's different file types that's used for different things. Okay. Now you can definitely, you know, all this information is obviously on Google. You can definitely Google it. But I, like I said, I try to make sure to prepare people for um, the best of their ability to be able to promote and, and, and the foundation for their business. Um, so understand, like I, you know, and I can say everybody doesn't do this, but I offer different formats um, with my logo packages, whatever. Everybody might not do that, but I do. Um, but understand that there's a difference between raster files and vector files. And trust me, when you get ready to start putting your logo on different promotional pieces, you will learn real quick what the difference between the two is because you might take the file that you have and you might want to blow it up and put it on your wall. And then when you do that and you see how blurry it is and you might be upset at the designer, but you can't, you got to understand, do your research, know your, know your information. You might be re like using the wrong file. So there's a raster file and that's the, you know, the file that you would normally see on a website. Um, on you know in a magazine something like that whatever like I said a raster file is, is basically an image a picture and it's made up of little dots 
And so these little dots kind of work close together and that's how you see the color. But when you blow this image up, this file up, those dots spread apart and it gets really grainy. And then it gets to a point where you can barely, like, barely see it. It's blurry, okay? Understand that that's not the file that you want to use when you're trying to print in a, a, a bigger size. You know, now there's the difference is there's vector files. Now your vector files are set up where you can resize and rescale as large or as small as you want and you don't lose any quality in doing so. So it's nice and it's important to have both types, both formats. Um, so, like I said, you know, all designers don't provide all of that or whatever. So, I, I can only speak for myself because I provide both. So, just please make sure that when you're trying to get a logo done, you know, don't just depend on the designer to provide you with all the information. Do your research. Be aware. Be knowledgeable of what you're really trying to do. Because it's more than just, I need a logo so I can slap it on this, I can slap it on that. There's so much more to it, you know, be, be all the way in, you know what I'm saying, with, with what you're about to do because you're investing in yourself. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for joining us, joining us here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. Harley wanted to say hello to everybody. <laughs> so thank you for coming um, and listening for the Speak Up and Inspire series. Um, next week, we are going to be interviewing Mr. Andrew Thor Angelica. He is a musician, and I'm excited to um, interview him next week. So join us next Monday at 8 p.m. right here on the Speak Up and Inspire series this month as we talk to men that are doing great things in their community. Have a great night.